In the next 10 minutes, you're gonna learn everything you need to get started in the game of tennis, including all the major strokes. Plus, at the very end, we're gonna let you in on a secret that's critical to understand if you want to be a good player. And we're gonna start by talking about the serve because the serve begins every point in the game of tennis. And it has to be hit from back behind the baseline, which is the line all the way in the back part of the courts, and has to be aimed across to the opposite service box. The serve is frequently referred to as the most important shot in tennis because it sets the tone for each and every point. The most common mistake that tennis players make on their serve that holds them back from success is what we like to call a pushy motion. And all that means is that the body is facing forwards, the hand is facing forwards, it's a low contact point, and you just basically line your strings up with where you want to hit the ball and just patty cake the ball over to the other side. Sure, that'll get you started and that'll technically get you in the game, but it's never going to allow you to advance beyond very, very beginner levels of play. So getting away from that pushing motion as early as possible is gonna help you develop as a player much, much faster. To get a fast start on the serve, it's critical you focus on three main elements. Number one, you have to use your body to power the shot. If you use your arm and your hand, it's always gonna be weak. So start off turn to the side and make sure you rotate forwards as you swing up towards the ball. And that leads us right into number two. It's critical that you toss the ball in the right spot so that you can make contact in a comfortable place. And that means if you're right-handed, you want the ball to be just up over the right side of your body. As you turn forwards, you want the ball to be directly over your right shoulder. If you're left-handed, directly over your left shoulder. And that leads to contact point. Your contact point should be directly over that shoulder and just out in front of your body so you have a little bit of room to transfer forwards and really use your body powerfully. If you do those three things, you'll be in a good position to start hitting solid serves. The next shot you really want to learn is a forehand ground stroke. A forehand means that it's on the dominant side of your body. For me, that's my right side since I'm right-handed. And a ground stroke means the ball bounces once before you make contact, meaning you don't hit it out of the air, but the ball bounces and then you hit it. So that's how you get forehand ground stroke. Now you're also going to be making contact and hitting this ball most of the time from around the baseline all the way up to inside the service line area, depending upon how short the ball lands. This also becomes most players' favorite shot, and you can really use it to develop it into a weapon. So it's really important that you really work on the forehand ground stroke for your tennis game. One of the biggest mistakes that you're gonna see a lot of tennis players make on the forehand ground stroke is that they use all arm, which means they're turned to the side and they're only using the arm to be able to hit the ball. That is going to cause a lot of injuries, especially in your elbow and your shoulder. So it's really important that you're trying to use your body and really using your body to swing through and your arm is really relaxed and you're just using both together to swing through the ball. The other thing that you really want to think about is your swing path. You want to start the racket head, which is this part of your racket, below where you're going to make contact with the ball. So you start below, you come up to the contact point, and then you finish above the contact point. It does not have to be over your shoulder. It just needs to make sure that it's above the contact point where you finish your swing. Now, the other thing you want to talk about is the contact point exactly where it should be. If you're stepping into your forehand, I'm stepping with my left foot here because I'm right-handed, I'm going to make contact right around my front foot. That means my racket is going to be straight this way and not going to be down at contact and not going to be up when I'm making contact with the ball. But it's going to be straight vertically this way and I'm going to be making contact right around my front foot. So again, up to that point and then finish above. That's gonna be really imperative, body movement, swing path, and contact point to make sure that you're really getting the most out of your forehand ground stroke. Now it's time to talk about the backhand. Now there's two different flavors of the backhand. You have the two-handed backhand or the one-handed backhand, and this is all gonna be hit on your non-dominant side. So just like we talked about the forehand over here, your non-dominant side with the backhand right here for your two-handed or your one-handed shot. Now, in general, your backhand, you want it to be a solid, consistent shot. 
You have your forehand that's gonna be maybe aggressive, and your backhand can be something you can always rely on, whether it's a one-handed or two-handed shot. Now, where do you hit the backhand? Generally, you hit the backhand around the baseline. The ball has to bounce first, and then you hit the ball. So that's gonna put you in the position of the baseline or slightly inside the baseline when you're hitting. Now, the biggest mistake most players make when they're hitting the backhand is that they're arming the shot. They're not using the rest of their body. So if you're a two-handed backhand user, that you're just swinging like this, and if you're a one-handed backhand user, you're just poking like this. The problem with this is that you're not gonna get a lot of consistency and power uh, with your swing because you're not using the rest of your body. Now let's talk about how do you hit your backhand. So let's start with the two-handed backhand. Now just like we were talking about before, one of the biggest things we wanna learn how to do is use your body. So when we're using your body, we're gonna get the racket to come under and turn all the way out and around. Now it's really important that you watch my body turning all the way out and around instead of just using my arms. Now, some really important key points about when you're hitting the one hand, the two-handed backhand, excuse me, is that you wanna make contact right in front of your toe. So, as we're swinging with our body, we're making contact right in front of our toe, and the racket's gonna go out and come all the way around on your finish. Now, this is so, so important that as you use your body and you're making that correct contact, that everything flows together and it's nice and smooth. Now, for the one-handed backhand, slightly different. Obviously, you have one hand on it. So, we're gonna start from here. Same thing with the swing path. We're gonna have the racket come out, under, and come up to the ball and make contact. Now, the contact for the one-handed backhand is further in front than the two-handed backhand, and that's one of the biggest differences that you're gonna have to uh, contend with if you wanna use a one-handed versus a two-handed uh, backhand. That the swing is contact is gonna be way in front. On the follow-through after this, it's gonna come all the way up and around not like the two-hander, but it's gonna be extended out in front of you and a little bit higher. So again, swing's gonna come up, come down, come up to the ball, and all the way around. One smooth motion is really important that even with the one-hander, you're gonna slightly use your body, not as much as the two-hander, but you're gonna slightly use your body and then complete that swing. The next critical shot we're gonna talk about is the volley. The definition of a volley is a shot in tennis that you hit before the ball bounces on your side of the court. Volley does not mean hit the ball back and forth over the net, that's actually a rally. Volley simply means that you're usually moving forwards and hitting the ball early before it bounces on your own side of the court. And so usually that means the player is closing inside the court, getting closer to the net, sometimes even inside the service line, which is the line up in the middle of the court. And because of that, you're taking time away from your opponent, and it's something that players do to attack. They're taking time away, they're improving their position on the courts, and the closer you get to the net, and the closer you get to your opponent's side of the courts, the easier it is to attack and start to, to put the ball away. And so this is a very aggressive thing to do as a tennis player, is to move forwards and take the ball out of the air instead of waiting for it to bounce. Now unfortunately, the mistake that a lot of tennis players make is as they close forwards and attack, they get super panicked. And, and because of that lack of time, they rush and they get really tight and jerky and they start punching the ball. And everything starts to get really abrupt and tight and tense and they lose control. And so they had an opportunity up there to attack, but they end up throwing it away by making a lot of mistakes and getting really rigid and tight and tense. The antidote to those mistakes is to be calm and smooth. And the technique you wanna use on volleys shouldn't be making contact way out in front and pun punching the ball really abruptly and jerkily, but actually bringing contact back a little bit so you have some room to flow through the point of contact. You also don't wanna make contact way far back behind yourself because then you start getting handcuffed and things get awkward and, and unnatural. So just out in front, of your front foot or just out in front of the front edge of your body is about where you want to make contact and your hand should be relaxed and loose so that you can smoothly flow through the point of contact and direct the ball where you want it to go. You should be viewing volleys as redirecting energy, not adding energy. It should be about placement and finesse and accuracy and not raw power and strength. 
A secret that is going to make everything that you've learned twice as effective is where the racket is faced, where the strings are faced, is where the ball is going to go. So for instance, on your ground strokes, if your racket face is down, the ball is going to go down. If your racket face is up, the ball is going to go up. And this applies to every stroke that you just learned. It's important to make those small adjustments so that you can make more balls in the court.